Well, uh, in many years ago, we uh, we always remember that some of hackers uh, they are going to uh, directly solder some wire into PC and they can use PC to control various things. But nowadays, uh, PC, uh, all the personal computers are with high, very high speed interface, something like PCI or USB, and you cannot directly attach a cable into your computer now. So uh, because uh, what, what I'm working on is something like a, a software defined radio or a very high speed data transmission or data processing. Uh, uh, making something like uh, FPGA code processor to accelerate the data processing that is much faster than CPU. And so I need something like, uh, I, I need a way to uh, process, to transfer data really, really fast. Uh, so now I'm working into this topic. I, I try to uh, use uh, a PCI Express bus to uh, uh, to directly access the main memory and the transfer data really fast. And here is a brief in that introduction. So uh, for uh, Newbos, I just explained the PCI Express uh, in a quick and fast way. So uh, let, let me make sure everyone understands this. Well, uh, PCI Express is a serial link. So it cannot, uh, as it, it cannot be directly uh, converted into I.O. It, it, it's not like a parallel bus. It's not like a printer port or serial port. It, it, it's high speed series. So you need some kind of uh, very complicated uh, thing. But, but that's not important. We can buy it or you use a converter. So, uh, so the, first, uh, the first thing we know is PCI Express is uh, it, it, it is, uh, something mysterious and uh, uh, very uh, high speed uh, data link. And it can go, nowadays we have PCI 5 version. So it can go, it goes to uh, 60, 64 gigabytes per second. That, that's blazing fast. And uh, for, for the slot, the mysterious uh, slot that is, uh, seems fragile, uh, all the high speed data flows into it. it, it it's not a, a very complex structure. Actually, the slot itself is something like a clock, a reset signal, then uh, beta pairs that, that we, we call the serial link. So that's all in the, in the slot, uh, also with power supply. So that, that's it. That, that, that is what, what happened on the motherboard. And uh, why we use uh, PCI Express, not Ethernet or USB, is because the, the latency of Ethernet or USB are 100 or 1,000 times higher than PCI Express. Because PCI Express is directly connected to CPU as this, as this one. Well, logically, you can see that the PCI is directly soldering all the uh, primary DDR memory, main memory, directly solder all the pins out. Logically, it's it's like you directly tap the, into the main memory, so the latency is low and it doesn't require CPU in the uh, CPU uh, process. It, it, it doesn't require, uh, require CPU to uh, interact with data transfer. Actually, you, you can think the P CPU, the PCI Express core in the CPU is some kind of uh, switching. It's a, something like an Ethernet switch. You, you can think it's a switch. So when you write, when you're trying to, let's say you, the Ethernet card is uh, running like uh, CPU, uh, we don't need CPU to receive the Ethernet packet. The Ethernet card can directly write, uh, receive the packets to uh, memory, RAM, directly write it uh, through PCIe bus without the CPU's knowledge. So, uh, the, the, so, so that's why the uh, PCI Express is the best way to do uh, data transmission or uh, uh, to make a co-processing -process because you, you can see that is uh, your card, your PCI Express device is another CPU and it can access the main memory or other cards when it, 
remember the PCI Express is a memory. It, it's a memory bus. It's not something like uh, I send a packet to CPU and the CPU goes into interrupt and grabbing data out. Not, not like this. The actually CPU doesn't know what, what you are doing on PCI Express. Well, for the data processing, you can directly read all the data out of main memory, then process it in your card and write the result directly into the memory without CPU's knowledge. So CPU just live there and check whether you have uh, processed all the data or you, or you can directly make a link. You, you can use PCI Express to connect the two PC together, directly transfer a mem con RAM contents from one PC to another. Well, that, that's very practical and it's 10 times lower latency than uh, Ethernet because there's no uh, IP protocol stack or something like that. Secure. It, it's not secure actually because anyone can install a PCI Express card on your computer. That means it has total access, they have total access to your computer. So game cheaters now, they use PCI Express to do cheating because the, uh, the hardware, uh, hardware, ha hardware cheat can, uh, can directly read the me memory contents. So uh, without a uh, CPU cannot detect this. Yes, that, that's the perfect way to do game cheating. <laughs> also, you even can write uh, the, the uh, can change your uh, mouse position directly to enemy's head. Yes, CPU doesn't know, it, it, it knows nothing about this. It, it, it's undetectable. Well, I, I mentioned this uh, just now. Well, uh, for let's say the, the, what is DMA? DMA is something like you can, uh, you can use the main memory as you wish and the without CPUs, uh, uh, without CPUs uh, uh, knowledge. So you, you can directly read or write uh, main memory. That, that makes, uh, that's a huge advantage to USB because USB, when you transfer a data block, something like a 4K bytes, you need an interrupter or CPU need to grab the, the data block out to process it. But uh, in with PCI Express, you can uh, take a one terabyte uh, RAM on, on a server or a huge server, and you can use FPGA to fill up all the, the uh, DDR RAM the all the uh, one terabyte RAM, and then that could take something like several tens of several tens of seconds, and uh, your uh, your your CPU just can do other things without any uh, problem. You you don't need to uh, do something like uh, every uh, every data block you need to interrupt or process it. You you don't need to. So that, that that's a huge advantage when you're doing a huge uh, handling huge amount of data, and also PCI is very low latency. Actually, I'm using PC as some kind of real-time controller because we know that PC is much, much faster than microcontrollers. Uh, it's running on four or, four or five gigahertz clock, and you can do tons of uh, floating point mass in, uh, in, in your computer. Then you, you can control a, a machine, something like a, a radio or, or uh, some uh, quantum basis device which need very fast the reaction. You can use PC to do something like uh, uh, 15 meg cycles per second to do a very fast responding control. Well, uh, also for robotics, the PCI bus is much reliable than USB. Well, uh, on, on a server platform, it's, uh, it, 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 it doesn't fail yet. Yeah, it doesn't fail. It, so uh, when, when you are controlling uh, something like a car or a robot from a computer, the best way is you, you try to uh, attach it on PCI Express. Well, the last one is uh, for high uh, interconnect is, since we, we know that the, the PCI Express is some kind of a memory bus, so you can write some data into main memory or write a uh, 
write data into another card and the, the data will flow through the CPU as this, we, 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 we see this, we, we can take this. You, you, you can see that if the data flows through the CPU, it's fast and the CPU don't need to uh, take any time to process it. So uh, that can be used as some kind of a, something like a, a Ethernet switch or packet switch, but it's much uh, faster than Ethernet, lower latency than Ethernet. That's why the, the AMD, uh, new AMD riser or EPYC platform has so many PCI uh, lens is for that they are actually those server uh, users, they are using the PCI Express as some kind of, you, you can think it's, a, it's an equivalent to uh, Ethernet, but its latency are much, much lower. Also, the logic is simpler. Well, to connect uh, something to PCI Express, I use this one, LT5031, where it's available on Chinese Taobao. And also you can email me if you uh, want something like this. Well, uh, that is the lowest, I, I think this is the lowest cost of uh, high-end Xilinx uh, FPGA board. Well, uh, this one, the 3K, the 3K, uh, the, the 7K series, the 7K series, this FPGA chip is labeled uh, like 5,000 US dollar on uh, DDT. But actually when you buy it in a uh, massive quantity, uh, massive amount, you can get a price something like $100. That's 50 times different. And uh, at the, the real transfer speed we measured here is 3.6 3 gigabyte yeah, per second. Well, it's because uh, all FPGAs, FPGAs are generally they have, they, they cannot handle the latest uh, uh, PCI Express version, it can do something like PCI Gen 2 or Gen 3. It cannot do uh, Gen 5 currently. Or if it can, if you want to do something like a PCI Express Gen 4 or 5 or IPGA, that could be really, really expensive. Those chips are, are hard to obtain and the price can goes up to like uh, several thousand dollars. But uh, why I choose the PCI uh, Gen 2? Gen 2 is old, but the cheapest, cheapest uh, is low cost, yeah. This one, this board can be, uh, can be bought in uh, less than $200 anyway. Yeah, yeah. Cannot, this one cannot do Gen 4 or 5 because the internal digital circuits in the FPGA are not fast enough. But well, is the motherboard compatible backwards? Yes, okay. uh, all PC Express are back uh, are backward compatible. So you can attach something like a Gen 1 to your latest uh, uh, very expensive gaming rig. So, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, uh, because physically PCI Express is point to point link. It's just like Ethernet. So the actually the fastest component in your system is the CPU. So uh, CPU won't be the bottleneck uh, unless you use a very old CPU. And uh, a single device uh, very slow doesn't affect the total system performance. Yeah, you, you can attach something like 20 cards from Gen 1 to Gen 5 and uh, uh, on a Gen 5 server and the server will run in Gen 5 speed. Yes, Be because it's packet-based, not uh, physically it's packet-based. So it's just like Ethernet, the, the very slow device doesn't affect the fast one, yeah. Well, uh, how, uh, how the PCI bus, uh, PCI Express transfer the data, data it, it's, uh, they, it, it use TLP packets, uh, transaction layer packet, and the 
uh, it, you, you can think this one is like UDP, but, but it's much simpler than Ethernet. It can only do write. Well, if you want, want to write a main memory, something like uh, change some uh, data in your game, you just directly send the TLB packet to your computer and they, it will change uh, the data in main memory. That's it. Uh, it. It doesn't require something like acknowledgement. You just directly send the write request. Well, for reading, you need to send the read request and uh, uh, just uh, uh, several nanoseconds after, you get a uh, reply, the read reply with data. Well, also PCI Express can do interrupts. It's just like it interrupts in microcontrollers. It can interrupt the system kernel. And you, the, that, 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 could be, that could be very low latency. And the, nowadays, nowadays, modern CPUs, they, they don't use wires, pins to do interrupts. Actually, they use message. It's something like when you uh, want to interrupt the CPU, you send a packet into PCI Express or you, uh, internally it's a packet in the CPU and, and the CPU will receive the packet, uh, see it as an event, uh, a packet is an event. So uh, when, when the CPU got this packet, it, it, it knows that, okay, this is an interrupt that happened. Uh, we can process it later, yeah. Well, uh, here, is, here is the way uh, the, the software code used to uh, do data transfer. It's called RIFA. Well, RIFA is uh, originally it's written by uh, UCSD, uh, American uh, University. But uh, the original version has some bug and, uh, and, and also missing some uh, important features. Well, Originally, Riva can only do direct memory access, something like read or write your main memory, but I add uh, AXI4 logic. What is AXI4? It's something reverse. It's CPU accessing the PCI Express device. DMA is device accessing main memory, but it, it can be reversed. You, you can use CPU to access uh, registers in your uh, FPGA card, that, that can enable something like a uh, canvas or various uh, user-defined logic. So I add an, an AXI4, which basically it's registers. So uh, with this modification, you can, uh, the CPU can, uh, can change settings in the card or uh, change register values in the card. And also I add the uh, IRQ functions uh, so the FPGA can send interrupts to CPU. Well, here's some demonstrations about the latency. Uh, this is how the, the, the FPGA card attached on, on uh, my testing computer. And uh, the left laptop, the laptop on the left, this one is attached to a logic analyzer. Well, because I, I need to do some low level debugging. Well, for PCI Express, uh, it's hard to debug actually. So writing the, uh, modifying the, the software took me a very long time. And, but, but now it's working, now, now it's uh, working perfectly. And the, it also requires some kind of special tools if you want to do something like a, a very low level physical layer debugging because the data lane is really fast. And uh, even you have a high-end oscilloscope, even you have a, a oscilloscope with tens of gigahertz bandwidth, you cannot, uh, you cannot recall the in, in, enough uh, time for finding the failure. Something like if it fails once a day, you need a huge amount of memory to record it. So I got this, I got this one, the key side, the logic analyzer dedicated for PCI Express. Wow. Yeah. This <laughs> cost. <laughs> well, new one is uh, something like uh, $150,000. <laughs> 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 but but, but I, I, I managed to connect this thing from eBay garbage. And uh, uh, after I con connected uh, something like, I collect uh, something like uh, tens of components, 
I put them all together and then now it's working. Well, it is for very difficult, the low level uh, box, something like if, if it, it fails in the uh, very bottom layer, cannot be uh, analyzed by uh, FPGA debugging tools. I need this thing, yeah. Well, also uh, setting this thing up is you know, time consuming and you need another computer to handle <laughs> it. So I, I need something like uh, three computers. Well, one for compiling the firmware for FPGA and uh, another for running Linux and uh, testing the PCI Express card. And also the third one is for running the logic analyzer. Mm -hmm. uh, also the logic analyzer itself is PCI Express. The green cable you see, it's, it's attached to PCI Express on a uh, desktop computer. It, it, this is uh, how the, the, the uh, logic analyzer, the, the logic analyzer looks like. Uh, basically it's the packet running through the PCI Express LAN uh, with, with the debugging tool by Keysight. You can see all, all this happening. Well, uh, normally in 99% of my working time, I don't need this thing. I don't need it. But if I run into some corner cases, it's something like uh, someone reported a bug, uh, send an issue to me, I need to debug it with this thing. Well, this is the latency measurement. It, it's uh, 200 Hertz. Uh, once five milliseconds, the APG send an interrupt up to Linux operating system and the operating system will give the uh, record the timestamp. So with uh, the timestamp values, I can check the uh, control latency of the PCI interrupts. Well, uh, we, uh, the test rig is something like uh, i3 with all CPUs cores running to 100%. Uh, how I reach 100% is by using 7 zip. Uh, I do a, a 7 zip benchmark and the saturated the CPU, and then I measure the latency. Well, th this is actually very impressive. It's something like uh, the nominal value of the uh, interval should be five milliseconds, but uh, the actual measured value is uh, minus one or positive one millisecond. So uh, basically that, that means uh, the CPU can uh, answer the interrupt uh, in less than one millisecond are uh, guaranteed. Well, even with CPUs, all the CPU cores are saturated. Well, that, that means if you control a robot uh, in something like 200 Hertz, that could be very stable. Well, if I lower the CPU usage uh, to 70%, the latency will go down to positive or minus uh, 100 microsecond. Yeah. 10, 10 times lower than uh, the saturated CPU. The peaks, actually these peaks are caused by uh, loading DLLs into application. It, well, uh, th this is very uh, interesting. If you keep everything static in your application, it, it, you have an application and the receiving interrupts from uh, PCI Express and uh, uh, do some data processing, uh, without uh, any memory dynamic uh, allocation or dynamic module load or unloading, something like if you don't uh, try to load that DLL, the latency can be very, very stable. Yeah, but if you try to load uh, uh, an application or load that DLL into the, uh, your system, well, that can cause the latency goes high. But, but it's not very high, it's something like uh, four, three or 400 microseconds. Well, it is not as fast as uh, embedded uh, controllers since we are running desktop limits. Uh, but I, I think this is good enough to build something like a, 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 a motor controller in one kilohertz. And why I uh, use a PC to control motor is because I can run various uh, experiment and uh, checking the waveforms or doing uh, various fancy stuff in PC. 
it's much faster, easier to change PC applications than doing microcontroller. Yeah, you, you don't need to uh, debug cable JTAG. You can uh, record everything into mem memory and uh, check your status. So uh, basically that's, that's all. Any questions? How long do you think to put this together? <laughs> your, your logic analyzer. Uh, logic analyzer, six months. And uh, <laughs> this one, the PCI Express uh, code, the, the code, code uh, took me another six months. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But since, since that time, at that time it's COVID, I have plenty of time debugging at home. Is that your day job also? Your day job also? No, 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 it's not my day job. It is something like I want to do signal processing, SDR acceleration. I, I want to run it fast. So uh, CPU is, is not good at doing uh, this, this stuff. I, I want to process all the data in uh, FPGA. Yeah. So, well, the, at the very beginning, I tried to use something like Zilin's, uh, Zilin's PCI Express DMA. XDMA, but it's full of bugs. Anything, uh, anything uh, uh, commercial without open source is a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so I, I walk into the source solution. Yeah, but there's a hidden bug. Hide deep, deep into the river, and the, yeah, it, it can uh, just uh, uh, interrupt your data trans uh, transfer. It can break the data transfer uh, at a random case. So I took uh, something like two months to hunt it down. Yeah, but, but now it's very stable. Yeah, I, I can run it, run it something like uh, 3.6 gigabyte per second, seven uh, by 24 hours and for one month uh, without any errors in the data stream. You, you mean the, the, the green one? It, it's not a part of the logic analyzer. It, the, that one is called the PCI interposer. It, it, we use it to, uh, to amplify the very weak and high speed signal and the pick up by the logic analyzer. Uh, if I don't need to use the logic analyzer, I can remove the bottom part, directly plug the, the FPGA board into the computer. Well, this one uh, just have some uh, minor issues. It's not a standard PCI card form. It's because I draw the PCB design really, really fast and I forget to uh, check the outline of the standard the PCI card. So I, I leave it there. Yeah, but uh, maybe several months later, I will try to uh, reform it. I will try to change it to uh, a standard PCI card so I can sell it. Yeah. But this one is really good for uh, doing uh, development, uh, FPGA development and uh, well, well, because uh, the because this card have uh, it has already used up all uh, transceivers, high speed transceivers, so I cannot attach something like a, a ten gig Ethernet to it. it. If you have a, a better FPGA, you can try to do something like a real time Redis on FPGA. Yeah, 